and morning and afternoon you get out and visit nearby historic sites. Well, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this afternoon we are going to see uh, a Karnak temple and uh, Luxor temple. Uh, the Karnak is considered as one of the greatest uh, religious uh, buildings ever built in the history of the mankind. And it's also the biggest in uh, Egypt, for sure. Karnak is the greatest religious complex ever built in Egypt. This is not one temple, it's a number of temples. These temples were dedicated to some god. That god was one of the greatest universal gods during the ancient times. The name of that god was Amun, A-M-U-N, Ra, R, W, A. That was the name of the god worshipped here in this part of Egypt and in these temples. The temples where we are now, known as Karnak, were built over a period of 2,000 years. 2,000 years. One king after the other was adding and building around this area over an area covers about 200 acres of land. In about 200 acres of land, we have many temples and many pylon. Do you know the pylon? The pylon is this huge building you see right behind you. And actually it consists of two towers. This part of the pylon is what we call the tower. And the other part is another tower. And in between the towers of the pylon, we usually have the entrance as we have it and we came through just a minute ago. What is the meaning of hypostyle hole? It's the hole in any of the temples where we have pillars. And the hypostyle hole in any of the temples is a representation for one part of Egypt. The pillar in the hypostyle hole is a representation for a province in one of the two main parts of Egypt. That's why in any of the temples, we usually have two hypostyle holes. One representing Upper Egypt and the other representing Lower Egypt. Actually, the pillars we have here are considered as the greatest pillars ever built in Egypt. We have 134 pillars, and these pillars were built in rows. The cartouches of King Ramesses II were carved on every side of these pillars. So the hypostyle hall was started to be built by King Seti I, the father of Ramesses II, and was completed by King Ramesses II. That was around the 12th century BC. Uh, talking about the obelisks, in this complex, if we call it complex, we discovered just two obelisks in a good shape here. One for King Totomoses and the other for Queen Hatshepsut. Queen Hatshepsut is one of a very few ladies ruled Egypt as a pharaoh. After her death, King Totomoses III ascended to the throne and decided to destroy everything belongs to her and depicting her name. He already destroyed one of the two obelisks she erected here in the Karnak. Uh, King Totomoses III in the guidebooks and in many of the history books was considered as Napoleon of the ancient times. Because Egypt during that times, during his times I mean, was a great empire. He conquered the enemies of Egypt in the south, in the north, in the east, and in the west. Everywhere he conquered the enemies. And he established his empire. And the tributes from these different colonies, the Egyptian colonies outside Egypt, the tributes used to come in the form of gold, silver, animals, ivory. It depends on the country or the colony itself, in Africa or in Asia. Uh, King Tutumoses was trying to show the future generation how great he was and his great achievements, how many prisoners of war he got, how many cities he conquered. And that's why we have a big number of figures or busts of figure for many of the 
prisoners of war came from these city states, as you can see here. And the one in the top has arms tied like this. This is a way to tie the arms of the prisoners of war. And in the same time, according to the documents, uh, Tutu Moses had over 14 military campaigns against the enemies of Egypt everywhere. And this is the evidence. Okay? Can we go this way, please? 